Hello once again our most valued student my name is Confident and welcome to the continuation of our topic on waves sound and light and in this particular topic we are looking at the sound waves we will also uh, wrap it up with what ultrasound so with that being said we have already looked at the other topics which is these topics so check the previous videos if you haven't watched we have done the transverse pulses, transverse waves, as well as longitudinal waves. We have done this part. So now let's look at the sound waves. From the previous lesson, I briefly touched on this, but this is the time to look at it in brief. We said a sound wave is an example of a longitudinal wave. Not only that, a sound wave is also a mechanical wave. So there it is. Sound wave at the bottom here. It's also a what? A mechanical wave. Now, being mechanical, we are saying it needs a medium to travel. So, we are saying sound waves travel th well through air and then better through the liquid and the best through the solid. And then this one, it comes from the explanation of the states of matter. And if you still remember on the three states of matter, where you have got a gas and then you have got a liquid and a solid. So, in a gas, Particles in the gas are far apart from each other and then in a liquid you've got Kind of particles that are much much closer to each other and Then in a solid now particles are neatly packed you see So because of this uh, Neatly packing arrangement in a solid where particles vibrate so we are saying sound can travel Okay here it travels uh, uh, it's okay, I'll just say, but the word okay is not good for me here. It can travel, let's say it can travel, it can travel through air. So, this is our air, this is our liquid, and this is our solid. So, we are saying in liquid it can travel faster, in solid it can travel fastest. You understand why we are saying this is because the more closely spaced the molecules in the medium the faster the wave travel the further apart the molecules the slower the sound wave travel now this also explains why in a vacuum sound wave cannot travel because a vacuum is an empty space so there is no medium to allow sound to travel through so now we continue to look at what pitch loudness and the quality which is the tone now the pitch of a sound uh, is linked to the frequency of that sound so if you talk about pitch in uh, of a sound always remember it is linked so which means pitch is what is um, proportional to the frequency of that sound says so the degree of highness or lowness of a sound is called its pitch the pitch of a sound depends on its frequency. The higher the frequency, remember that, it means the higher the pitch. Now, higher frequency means shorter wavelength. Remember, frequency and wavelength, the two um, are kind of uh, inverse. When one is higher, then it means the other one is lower. So when we're saying here a high frequency, if I can just remind you, on the waves, a high frequency looks like this the waves are closer to each other and then a low frequency is like this so you see that so that's why you say this for high frequency what we have shorter wavelength because the wavelength is that distance and then low frequency look at the distance of the wavelength the wavelength means it is much longer so you see the part so that is that part when you're saying high frequency, which is the high pitch, but it means the wavelength is what? The wavelength is shorter. So let's look at these diagrams here. When you look at the diagrams, let's start with this one that shows pitch. It says low pitch, then it explains, look at the wavelength. The wavelength is longer. But now the amplitude will remain the same. Don't forget, if this amplitude is A, and that amplitude is a it mustn't change 
if in here the amplitude remained as a and the amplitude remain as a so that they only are affecting the pitch and remember the pitch is a is linked to frequency now frequency look at this wavelength is shorter so this is the wavelength this is the wavelength so here we are saying high pitch what happens the wavelength is what shorter and then low pitch what happens the wavelength is longer so whenever you're dealing with pitch always look at the length of the wavelength the amplitude must remain the same so let's come to loudness on the other hand loudness of a sound relates to the amplitude of that sound are you are you with me it says the loudness of a sound uh, relates to both the amplitude of that sound as well as the sensitivity of the human ear now the next part they says the loudness of a sound wave is related to what to the amplitude of that sound the the bigger the amplitude the louder the sound so when you look at this part now that's when now it makes sense it says a loudness of a sound increases with the amplitude of the sound now if i can look at the rest position or the equilibrium position of this wave like that so that i can uh, have the amplitude of that sound so you can see that this is the amplitude there my a so this is the amplitude you can see that is different from the amplitude on the second one if you look at this one see that the amplitude is longer here so that's my p so you can see that here it's a quiet sound but here it's a loud sound but be careful look at the wavelength the wavelength which is related to pitch is the same so if this was lambda even the wavelength here mustn't change it must be lambda so that you have got the same pitch so here you'll have same uh, pitch because frequency is the same wavelength is the same but the amplitude tells you now the loudness of that sound are you with me and then this diagram here in a way kind of brings all this uh, two together the loudness as well as the pitch look if it says lower pitch focus on the what focus on the wavelength so longer wavelength means low frequency shorter wavelength see that means high frequency so high frequency then can say it's high pitch frequency and pitch lower pitch and lower frequency or you are allowed to say longer wavelength low frequency shorter wavelength high frequency high frequency high pitch okay now look at the quieter sound on the quieter sound i told you the wavelength is the same but you're focusing on the amplitude quieter sound amplitude is shorter and the amplitude is longer meaning louder sound so those are the things that you just need to remember when you're dealing with that then it says the human ear uh, hear sounds with frequencies between 20 hertz up to what up to 20,000 hertz which is 20 kilohertz that's where the human sound can detect the sound this is called the audible range they might bring this in a multiple choice to say what is the audible range of a human ear from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz and then says the quality of sound therefore depends on what its pitch which is frequency and its loudness which is the amplitude with that it brings us to the next type of uh, wave called the ultrasound a very important one uh, when i bring in the questions you'll understand but let's quickly run through the ultrasound what you need to know for the ultrasound now it says ultrasound have frequencies above the twenty thousand hertz which is above the audible region so this is above the audible region meaning the humans cannot hear it because it is outside the audible range are you with me it says many animals can hear ultrasound frequencies for example birds are active the bats they are active at night and use ultrasound to find their way in the dark as well as to find insects and other objects yeah it is very important for you to to read in general on how bats can use the ultrasound to detect 
their path as well as to find the insects that they are feeding on all right they use that to know that this is danger this is a wall this is this they find their way through the ultrasound so that is what pets use but it's important for you to just read around that and then what are the medical uses of ultrasound very important to us is the medical uses number one the doctors use ultrasound to check the health of babies before they are born so when you go to that scanner it's the ultrasound that is detecting if the baby is healthy and if there is a problem with the child and then doctors also use ultrasound to what to examine blockages if ever you are going for a checkup they can use ultrasound to examine blockages or other problems in human organs you know if ever you have a uh, tumors or if ever you have um, any blockage or blood clot and everything they can use that and then ultrasound is used to detect and destroy tumors and gallstones as well as to measure the blood flow through organs all right so these are very important for you to know if uh, the uses of ultrasound in general mainly in the medical as well as the uh, the animals that uh, depend on ultrasound for their detection and then in here that is left is the indigenous knowledges whereby uh, animals have been seen to especially during in, in regions that are prone to earthquakes and tsunamis or tornadoes it has been said that those animals have been seen to leave or forget that land days before or sometimes a um, few minutes before the, the, the tornado struck or before the earthquake struck so it is said that these animals can be, are able to detect some of these um, uh, warnings way before uh, meaning if you are to study the behavior of these animals sometimes it can be used to pre uh, prepare human beings for the disaster that is about to strike you know so one of them is the ultrasound snakes are also very good when it comes to the sound uh, like the ultrasound when it, uh, for sensing danger and changes in the uh, vibrations so guys this is the end of this part of the lesson on waves which is the sound uh, and we looked at the two types of mechanical waves the transverse waves as well as the longitudinal waves but now in the next lesson we are looking at one of the most 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 important lesson the electromagnetic radiation you don't want to miss this because from here that is where we are going to look at uh, lots of calculations that are involved here I'm talking about looking at the uh, visible I mean what do you call this electromagnetic spectrum the easier way to master it and then look at questions that are going to follow we've come to the end of the lesson i hope this does make sense to you join me in the next lesson if you are still not subscribed but you are benefiting from these lessons what are you waiting for just subscribe press that subscription button and you become a part of the family this is a welcoming message to uh, for me from you just subscribe join me in the next lesson thank you